Uh, uh. Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel where we make pretty costumes and things. We are moving right along on our Nadja costume from What We Do in the Shadows and we are finally starting the blouse and the skirt for her costume. If you're new here, I have already made 1890s combinations, a corset, a bum pad, a corset cover, and a petticoat, and I will have all those videos linked below. So I guess let's get started. I'm using Angela Clayton's McCall's pattern uh, 8231 for these garments. The only modification that I plan to make is I'm not gonna have buttons going up and down the skirt. Otherwise, we will be using this really pretty broadcloth that I bought on Etsy for the skirt and then I'm gonna use this really deep red cotton that I got at Joanne Fabrics for the blouse. It's gonna be pretty basic but I've never used this pattern before so it's gonna be kind of fun to see like how she makes a walking skirt. I have made several walking skirts. The skirt I'm wearing today is also a the black snails walking skirt pattern so I'm very familiar with them but this will just be a fun way to kind of rethink how these are made and I will also be making them to go over 1890s undergarments which will make them look a little bit different. So I guess with that being said, it's time to cut open this pattern and uh, start making this ensemble. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so I figured because this is an Angela Clayton pattern and I made a Angela Clayton pattern a couple of years ago where the skirt was like six, maybe even eight inches too long for me. I had to wear like six inch heels when I took photos of it and you could still see the skirt like pulling weirdly on the ground. I'm going to take these skirt pieces in by four inches. That's not quite enough to like make up the difference, but I figured I could always like leave it a little too long and take it in when I've put it on my body versus like cutting off too much right now and then being SOL. And then we will cut out our fabric. friends we are back I forgot to do an outro the other day when I um, just stopped making things and went Halloween hunting because that is obviously what I do with my spare time now but we are back today we're gonna focus on the shirt mainly because I have all the pieces of the shirt like on my table because I just cut them out the end of day a couple days ago so I realized a really weird thing that really only you will hopefully know hopefully when I wear this no one will know but I actually the red fabric that I chose I have like a bolt of like just small cuts of it and the two cuts that I washed and prepped for for this shirt are slightly different in color and weave. By slight, I'm gonna just hold them up to the camera and like let you be the decider of like if you can tell the difference. But I was purposeful in the way that I cut it. Okay, you can totally tell. So I was purposeful in the way that I cut it. The pieces in the front and the back all match and it's just the sleeves and a couple other little things that are in the other fabric. We're just gonna go with it because like honestly, it doesn't bother me that they're two slightly different. I don't think anyone's gonna be mad that my fabric isn't exactly the same everywhere on the blouse. It's also gonna mostly be covered up by a jacket. So we're not gonna worry too much about that, but we're gonna get right into actually making this. And the first step is to do the interfacing. In the pattern, it has you do hand-sewn interfacing, and that's because sewn-in interfacing uh, uh, takes better to machine washing, but I don't have sew-in interfacing. I just have fusible. So we're just gonna go with fusible, and when I wash this shirt, I will probably have to wash it on a delicate cycle by itself. It's just not the worst thing in the world. We do this all the time. That's an Eva shake, so uh, she's telling me it's time to sew. Okay, so I decided to just overlock the sleeve pieces because um, it doesn't seem like in the instructions they have a way to like 
make these clean and I don't really want to do French seams on them. So I just overlocked them. And then I also interfaced my interfaced pieces. So now I can actually construct this garment. I can't, I just, <laughs> whatever, we're here. Also, when I get to the yoke, so because the bodice has you like, sew these together with a French seam. We don't have to worry about that, but there's this like yoke bit and all of this going on in the armhole. When I get there, before I do the side seams, I will serge this too so that this seam is clean. I'll try to explain it when I get to that step, but now the construction can actually begin. So let's do this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I have the facing all sewn up. I have the edges pressed inward, and then I also have like the seams pressed and everything. And I'm going to pin this um, to the, the shirt and around the neckline, and then also like around all these folded edges and slip stitch this shut. But also I just realized while looking at this on camera that this totally looks like a bat. Just saying it, like with its wings out. Anyway. Okay, so I have surged the sleeves and then I also just hand stitched the inside and added the collar. I think I did something wrong cause that doesn't look cute, but whatever. I followed the steps, I just, probably did something wrong. Yeah, so that's all for today because I have D&D &D and I'm hungry, so I'm gonna do food and that. I just have to add the sleeves and the sleeves include cuffs and then also the ties that tie the shirt together. Buttons, obviously, and buttonholes, and then um, the bottom hem. I'm gonna try really hard to get this and the skirt done tomorrow, but we'll see how this goes. All right, friends, I am going to attempt to get the shirt and skirt done today. We will see uh, if I can, but the first thing that I need to do is make the sleeves for the shirt. All that's left on the shirt is the sleeves, obviously the cuffs and everything that comes along with those, and then attaching them, the bottom hem, and all the buttons. So I feel like I can get that done before lunch, and then after lunch, get started on the skirt. So let's just get going and see what happens. Okay, so the hardest part about two-part sleeves is not accidentally making the same sleeve twice. So what I like to do for two part sleeves, and by that I mean like this is a piece and this is a piece and together they make up the sleeve. What I like to do is 
create mirror images like I have here and lay them out and pin them separately and basically do as many of the steps, like the first main important steps, which is putting the pieces together separately as possible. It's way harder when you have to do this with aligning as well. Luckily, I don't have to worry about that today, but I still just wanted to point out that <laughs> This is something I personally struggle on. But anyway, I just wanted to share. Okay, so I like really was confused and really just honestly hated the process of putting together the sleeves, specifically the packet plackets. So um, I didn't film any of it. It was hard enough for me to understand to begin with. Filming it would have made it really, really hard. I'm so sorry. This is what they look like. They kind of look like but I'm just gonna add the cuff and we're gonna go from there. I'll say the reason that like sewing the placket was so hard is mostly because I sewed the sleeves together wrong. I sewed the wrong side of the sleeve. Like I sewed, how do I describe this? I didn't sew them together quote unquote wrong. And so when it was like this step and then this step, I sewed this side to this side and not this side to this side. And then I was like, well, I don't wanna undo it. So I'm just gonna sew it all up. And then I had to undo it and it just, it was a lot. It was really hard. I hate plackets. I'm just gonna be very honest. And that's where we're at. So now I'm gonna do the cuff. Hopefully I can get it done quickly. I'm not gonna be getting these done today, guys. I'm just gonna be straight with you. Uh, yeah, so let's get the cuffs going, friends. Okay, so I did all of the machine sewing for the blouse. It's got the little thing in the back, the sleeves are on, etc., etc. The next steps are to hand sew snaps in here and then fake buttons on top, and then the same for the cuffs and like the collar. So we're actually just gonna move on to the skirt so I can get all my machine sewing done today and then I can like hand sew tonight on the couch and probably tomorrow night on the couch as well. So for the skirt panels, the first thing that I need to do is flatline the cotton to the brocade and to do that I'm basically going to put like a bajillion uh, pins in it all around it and then baste it and then take it over to the serger and serge all the edges. The reason I'm serging the edges is because this part of the pattern also doesn't have any explanation on how you clean or finish the insides besides the like waistband and the hem. So I think it's safe to assume that I should just serge the edges. This pattern doesn't come with a pocket either. I have used my favorite pocket pattern that I have hanging up on my wall to make pockets. So I will be serging those edges and placing them in the front seams, like the seam closest to the center front. So let's just get started on that. And um, hopefully I can be very fast and get this at least to a point where I'm hand sewing the waistband and the hem. Hello friends! So today we are going to be hand sewing a bajillion snaps onto the blouse and the skirt of this garment. I said I was going to do them at night and I ended up sewing until 9.30 at night and then um, 
not talking to the camera or explaining anything to you all. And then I said I was gonna do them the next night and the next night I ended up working on some stuff upstairs until nine o'clock at night which I can't show you, which is also why we're downstairs, is because there are things happening that you'll find out next week. But anyway, we're here. We've got snaps. I've got two different size snaps. I've got dress hooks, because I'm gonna sew a dress hook in the top of the skirt. I have buttons, my little sewing kit. This is my like, uh, I'm sure you guys see this with my pins in it. I also, take this downstairs when I have to do hand sewing because I can close it up and lock it. So I can like literally just, you know. So I've got that. I have, this is the pattern piece for the skirt. And then this is the pattern piece for the blouse. And it has the markings where I need to put my snaps on it. I didn't bring anything to mark it, but I basically just figured I'll like kind of eyeball it. I'll get one half done and then like start on the other half or something like that. Who knows? Uh, but right now i've got to get going on this so i will do my best to show you just a little bit here and there i'm gonna find something to watch on tv eva's right next to me so yeah that's it after the snaps we're gonna uh cut to the reveal but uh so i won't be doing any outro after that i'm gonna do my best to get some good shots everything's pretty cushy so we're gonna see what my tripod can handle and um So there you have it. That's how I made my blouse and my skirt for my Nadja cosplay. So these are my kind of final thoughts. I think that the shirt is too big. It, I could have made a size smaller. I didn't, I don't, I didn't read what the ease was on this, which is 100% my bad, but at the same time, it's just way too big. Like I, um, the skirt is also too big. That's an easy fix. I'm just gonna add another hook. I'm safety pinned into it right now. I'm just gonna add another hook to a hook bar. And luckily the way it overlaps, you don't really see the snaps, but like I could snap one or two of them, but like whatever. Otherwise, I love this skirt. I actually really like the pattern for this skirt. I someday will make this, this pattern again with horsehair braid instead of the way I did it and doing the more like hand finishings and stuff. But let's be honest, time got away from me this week and that just, that just happens. It felt weird sewing the the buttons like right on top of where the snaps were that's what the instruction said is like where place buttons where you place snaps but like then i would have to sew through where the snap was so i just kind of moved them a little bit uh and i ended up ripping out this piece here for the neck and uh fixing it a little so that wasn't so bad like the ugly part is right here look at this is so weird and ugly but no one's gonna see that, so. I can't tell too bad about the sleeves, but then again, everything is dark in here right now because it's like 8.30 at night. So we'll just see how it looks in the light. Overall, I feel like the shirt could have been at least one size, well, just one size smaller, and uh, the skirt could have been one size smaller as well, but I still like them. I still like the pieces. I am so glad I took four inches off of this hem. This hem is actually perfect. Like. It could be a little shorter, it could be a little longer, but like, it's not, it's like perfect. So I'm very glad that I made that call at the beginning of this like skirt because those four inches would have been a nightmare to have to work with. Let's be honest, we all know. I did add pockets and they don't, in my opinion, look too obtrusive or weird or like out of place. So that's great. And now I can hold mine and Toby's cell phones and things in my pockets. I'm gonna let you know right now that next week's video is not going to be a sewing video. It's going to be a, like a studio revamp video. So yay, that's exciting. As you can already see behind me, uh, things are a little different. It's gonna be a little different in here, but I'm excited. I think you guys are gonna like next week's video. And then after that, I will have the jacket video up for you all. The jacket video is actually gonna go live after Dragon Con, just 
for my sanity's sake. After after Nadja's jacket video, do you know what we get to do? Do you do you know do you know what we get to start? It's something something spooky. Thank you all so much for watching this video and if you liked this video, feel free to subscribe. I make cute costumes and things like that and um until next time, may all your dreams come true. Viva, <gasps> come see hi! You are just out of frame. You are just out of frame, my silly baby. But it's okay. Hey, babe, this makes my neck, does this make my, this all, like, this whole getup makes my head look tiny. For my garment, uh, la, 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 la